What's going on, guys? Good morning. Welcome back to Everyday Struggle. Nadeska Academics and Wayno here. Hope you're having an amazing week so far. How are you guys doing? I'm chilling. How are y'all doing today? I thought it was Wednesday, so I'm a little. Wayno, you skipping man. days? Huh? You skipping days mentally? No, I'm not skipping no days, man. You skipping time? <laughs> Probably a little bit. Yeah, a man. A little bit. Stop having us waiting on you like you King Joffy Joe or some shit. Wow. Not King Joe. Who the hell is King Joffy Joe? More movie references. He has no idea. Yo, who the fuck Yo he don't know who King Joffy Joe is, y'all. Who the hell is Gotta that? Gotta destroy him for that You wanna one. talk about um, Soldier Boy and Tiger instead since you clearly don't know movies? Yeah. No, I gotta Google who that is because I've heard that reference a lot of times. Cam used to say it a lot. But anyway. All right, so we're talking about something that academics does know, Soldier Boy and Tyga. Look, Tyga's had enough. You guys remember in mid-January, he posted his Spotify streams next to Soldier Boy's 2018 numbers to prove that he's obviously doing better. And now he's officially responded in an LA leakers freestyle over Tatiana. Uh, we don't have time to play this today, but to quote Tyga, call me a goat, don't call it a comeback. Seven million records, nine months, where's Soldier at? Um, Soulja Boy, of course, <laughs> responded a few hours later with his own diss track on SoundCloud. His got a little bit more disrespectful. First off, who's Tyga, Big Draco, everybody want to know I'm on fire, say you had the biggest comeback, you're a liar, and then he goes on to reference Black China and Tyga's son. It's a lot. Um, are you guys surprised that Tyga finally responded? No, absolutely not. Uh, I think we've seen Soulja really just trying to live on that moment, and it, it, it was Playful fun at first, and now it's getting a little bit more and more disrespectful. Also, we saw the news that supposedly Soldier Boy and Black China was dating just to fuck around with Tyga. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you know, again, Tyga man a little worse, addressed it in raps. But of course, Big Draco, he got way more disrespectful. And I've been telling y'all, man, like some people say I was hating. I, I, I think I think Soldier's time is up, man. I, I think we're seeing the remnants of that moment, which was funny. And I think we all got to appreciate that he's a legend, mm -hmm. but I think this is where he kind of ruins it all because. So the response we, wasn't strong enough because you always say like you like to hear it in rap versus him just talking and tweeting. So here's finally some music from him. Maybe not what you expected, but still music. I don't know. I th well, it's Big Drake. I don't know if there's such a thing as tasteless and classless, but eh, yeah, I fucked your baby mama and I was playing Fortnite with your son. I mean, very savage. But come on now, come on now. Like you just were, you just was in the studio like a week ago saying you wanted you want to actually do music with Tiger. Sure. Yeah, this is very draining. This this draining. You know, th this is very draining. Not seriously because like we talk about Soldier Boy and Tiger having a spat. Like, come on, yeah. I mean, this is not exciting to me at all. Um, I didn't expect Tiger to say anything because I just expected Tiger to just keep putting putting up his stats. I tell you one thing though, they keeping this fucking Tatiana hot. That's true keeping that shit hot, but um, I don't really have much to add to this. I didn't think that Tiger would actually say anything about Soldier, and like like you said, I think Soldier's like, is kind of beating a dead horse now with the whole Tiger shit. Like, it was cool the first month. Even after a week after the month, it was cool, but it's like, at this point, what? Like uh, Again, I'm just waiting for one of these f big songs with the features that he listed to come out, and I, I seen someone say, like, well, you claim you wanted more music from him that he could capitalize in the moment, and he's giving music, now he's complaining. Well, a lot of the songs he's given aren't the top tier songs. He's just throwing out random songs, which I believe aren't his best. So if you got the good collabs, put that out. Um, I don't know, Blueface get a lot of money because everybody's on the Tatiana <laughs> remix. We got yeah, Nicki on it, Nicki and Cardi beefing on the joint. We got Cardi on the remix remix. We got YG on it. Shit, I might get on the next, man. I don't know. Let's all pray that that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But um, so Blueface is the winner here. Yeah, okay. Blueface is definitely the winner. <laughs> Unanimously, yo. his 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 fucking song keeps going in all of this. Like nobody doesn't care about and, none of that shit. And by the way, I, I just want to say like, yo, a few years ago, Tiger was hip hop's like a beaten stick, and I do believe after seeing Tiger reach for that security gun like three or four times, Tiger ain't going for that no more, man. <laughs> so like again, he's doing his thing musically, but he's not gonna be the butt of every joke where you just get your shit off on him and keep rocking. So again, I thought it was a dope way to disrespect him to, to uh like defend himself. Okay. Um in the face of disrespect. The only thing is that somebody like Big Soja, he's gonna get he's gonna bring it to a level where like now you know it's not even about music. It's the same thing with the Quavo thing. Like he went all the way overboard, same with um even Chris Brown, all the way overboard, where now it's kinda like, yo, I don't even know if we trolling no more, if we rapping no more, we gotta get physical because again I could imagine, um, you know, recently um, 
Tiger was in the news about some situations with him and Black China due to his son, right? right? And child support is hand third. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to hear about a guy who may have been dating his baby mother, like rapping about being around his son. That could be really sensitive. Yeah. So again, uh, I think Big Soldier don't got a problem with that, but again, I, I think it's bad it's energy. Too much I don't okay. think it's going to come to nothing like too serious where it gets physical because, I mean, we've seen stuff that's more in depth disrespectful than this not turn physical so i don't think it's going to turn physical but i think there's no place to be you know fucking with the with 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 the man's son or saying yeah. something about his son you know but i don't look to soldier to diss people either like i'm looking for soldier to just put out records that he does like i'm not looking for him to go at tiger for real for real well while he's going at tiger him and drake finally cleared the air so he shared a screenshot of it an uh, instagram dm conversation where drake basically hits him and says you know like all jokes aside it's all love uh, i don't know if you were serious about the video thing but i never knew you wanted to do a video for we made it you know i would have done it but on some real shit <laughs> kill that show so they're good what's our temperature on like posting dm conversations are those not supposed to be private yeah i, I would i would i really want people to stop screenshotting shit like I, I, like everybody doesn't have to know, you right. know what I mean? Like everything doesn't, everybody doesn't have to know. But the thing is, is that now it turns into news. So I guess like that's the reason why people push it out there. Just to, I think, guess he's just showing his validation to say, oh, Drake fucks with me. But if you know Drake fuck with you, then you don't need to post that. I just think that screenshots, all of that, those type of convos should just be left out of media or left off your page, period. Yeah. You know, especially, because a lot of people do that where they suit, like when somebody passes away, they show the last conversation. Like, oh, leave all of that alone. Like, yeah. keep it personal to you. I'm surprised Drake would really message him because through all that, that whole of theatrics with the Drake mm -hmm. type of stuff he was doing, is it, uh, but you thought Drake would have been offended by that? I'm sure he just thought it was kind of funny. I thought he, I think he would have think that's just funny. A little like, like just the way. Come on now, Drake, the nigga who claimed he started talking again with talking about somebody's kid and even talking about just recent stuff that Drake clearly feels feels a certain type of way about. But how do we know he feels a type of way? We don't know he feels a type. And he mad at Pusha T's. That's Pusha T though. You think you think he equating what Soldier Boy say about him to what Pusha T said about him, or or that or their beef? Like I don't think that that's on the same level at all. I'm equating that soft spot universally. So if if you touch on that and you're playing around with that, given his circumstances, I can imagine. Evidently not. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I do think he probably still don't like it, but I do like. Really? Just, so then, why would he even reach out? I don't know. I've seen I've seen Drake message her, some of these people who have called him out publicly, and I think honestly he's just not in that temperature to be like just creating bad energy. So I think he understands the power of sometimes just the acknowledgement. You acknowledge mm -hmm. you acknowledge somebody, just let let them know like, yo, listen, the energy ain't the same over here, and quickly you realize. Big soldier or whoever else who was giving you that negative energy, they switch up and they're like, yo, we're talking, we're friends, you know what I mean? So That's a good that's, point, but you're also saying that Soldier Boy's 15 minutes are about to be done. Drake has nothing to lose here. He's doing super well. It's whatever bad energy that he may or may not Drake have felt. About, I, man, Drake get too much fucking money. Like, you ain't worried about no no shit that Soldier said about him. Like, he not, and, and that's why he probably did reach out to him, just to say what's up. Like, I, I just wish that, like, when somebody reaches out to you that it doesn't become, like, Public. public knowledge because that's why it's called direct message they sent it directly to you not to everybody he could have wrote that in your comment section if he wanted it to be posted which i'm pretty sure he don't care that he posted it but it's like damn dog like yeah let's keep this between me and you but um unless you feel like the world wants or needs a drake and soldier boy collab but, but i do get like why so because soldier boy with with him feeling unappreciated. I think Although everyone taken. has been very publicly appreciating yeah. it since he said all since of that. Since he said that, everybody, be, I mean, ASAP Rocky gave him, like, you know, his influence. Like he said he influenced him on the internet. Of course, you know, Drake saying he fuck with him. There's a lot of people that came out and said that they mess with him. But I, I just, I think that it's like for him, he fi he's finally getting it, so he just feels like showing it off. Felt know? a little pandering, though. Like, Drake is like, yo, yo, I didn't know you wanted to do the video for We Made It, dog. What you mean like, pandering, though? Why you always trying to make it seem like niggas is timid or some shit? Nah, but stop it, Drake. You just tell a nigga he wasn't trying to do no damn video with him, man. Like, don't come back years and be like, I know you want to do the video, dog. <laughs> stop it, bro. Stop it. Like, again, you could fuck with... I think he, he finds... He probably does find Soldier Boy hilarious in whatever he's mm -hmm. doing. But the whole, yo, I know you want to do the video, stop it, Drake. Cut it out. See, he just be trying to start shit all nah, the time. Nah, cut it out, Drake. It ain't even like that. That's what I'm saying. It's not even like you think this nigga give a fuck, nigga. He probably, he probably did want it. He, 
I'm I'm pretty sure that if a, if an opportunity presented itself and it made sense for him to do a video, then he would have did it. But at the same time that we made it was out, he was running through all of that shit with Quavo and all of that. At the same time, you're like, oh, let me hold up. But I don't think that he's pandering like he's, oh, you know, I always wanted to, like, stop doing that. This is what I don't understand. And that I don't know why you, would, you. I don't even like, know why he would even hit that nigga then. Like, like. It just didn't make sense. Like, why would you... Because he would hit you... him. That shit was not meant for everybody to see. It's not meant... <laughs> Look, you got to remember, this is not meant for It felt like Drake was like, oh, I'm so... I'm, I'm sorry, like, I hurt your feelings back in the day by not doing the video, but I fuck with you. Like, it felt it was, like, odd. I don't know, man. Yeah, you don't. So don't let's just Hopefully see. this means Big Draco got a Drake feature. Because the Do nigga... you want to hear them on a record together yeah. in 2019? According to Big Soldier, he taught Drake everything he know. And... Um, <laughs> Drake on his shit. I would love to hear Big Drake on Drake on the track. The last track was We Made It. I want to hear part two. Sorry. All right, if it happens, that's a huge moment for, for Soulja Boy this year. All the music you're complaining about, that would be big. Soulja going to have a big summer, man. Watch. Okay. He's going to have a good summer. I believe he will. Once he dropped the movie and that. Why are you movie. smiling like that? Because I believe eyes just cause no, now, cause, cause he, cause yo, we got to stop the, the cap, yo. You know we scrolled through that movie. That movie was like a document. It, it, it was it, a documentary, it, yeah. But I, but, I, but I was trying to but, find a scene where they were getting busy. Like, as always. <laughs> I'm just, listen, man. Let's wait for the Soldier movie, man. Yeah, let's wait for the Soldier movie. Let's wait for the Soldier movie. You know what? Let's talk about Nipsey Hussle. Uh, Nipsey's been doing amazing, and we really want to show some love to him for his evolution and reinvention over the years. So last week, he released a video for his single called Racks in the Middle. It features Roddy Rich and Hit Boy. So this song is reportedly the lead single from his upcoming sophomore album. And Nipsey and his girlfriend, Lauren London, were also just profiled in a very dope GQ spread. Now, of course, you remember Victory Lap. So this is his first, his major label debut after dropping about 13 years of amazing mixtapes. He got a Grammy nomination for it and he's had some few a few milestone moments over the years so you guys remember in 2013 he dropped the Crenshaw mixtape yeah. uh, he's been also very innovative so it came out as a free digital download on mixtape sites and then he at a pop-up shop in LA he was selling limited edition copies so a thousand of them for a hundred each Jay-Z reportedly bought a bunch so he sold very well and then I believe in 2014 when he released mailbox money he tried something similar so I think it was 100 copies for one thousand dollars each yeah. and then finally in November 2017 Billboard said that he signed a deal with um, Atlantic Records for his indie label, All Money In, so he retains control over the roster. Yeah. That was a lot, but just to say that Nipsey's been like working really hard over the last decade plus, and like he deserves some recognition for it. Absolutely, I mean, uh, uh, Nipsey spent a lot of time. Uh, I'm talking like 2008, 2009. I think he had moved to New York. Um, he was first signed to like Cinematic Records, you know. Um, and then it was Cinematic, and then he went on to Epic, and then I think he got dropped from Epic for creative differences and all that. But when you look at Nipsey's, um, when you look at Nipsey's career, it all ties back into his brand, which is Marathon. Mm -hmm. Like he's been doing this for a long time. He he's built the narrative that in order to win, you got to keep going, right? So you look up now, even with this album, he started working on that album in 2014. It just came out last year. You know, so that's four years of work, and then he got a Grammy nod. Is doing very well. I'm pretty sure he's gonna drop another video off of it. It's like it, it's like every time you, you not forget about it, but you like okay, then he reminds you that Victory Lap is still here. Right. So we haven't even seen the documentary behind Victory Lap, etc. But just looking in terms of Nipsey's career, he's the epitome of how you kind of gotta move in this game. Mm -hmm. You know, rare though. Because we talk about a lot of people who sort of like shoot up the charts quickly and yeah. then think fizzles. You, the marathon is yeah. very important. Like you said, it's not a sprint for him. I mean, he also did like a big endorsement deal with Puma. Mm -hmm. You know, he did a big endorsement deal with Puma. Um, even like I've been to his uh, the, the Crenshaw store. He bought the Fat Burger in his neighborhood and then he bought the whole swap meet in the store. Originally, it was like kind of grungy. Mm -hmm. Remodeled it, rebuilt it. It's kind of like a tourist attraction. You really got people coming from all over the world to go to Crenshaw and Slauson. That's not the nicest of places to go, yeah. but he's kind of reshaping what his neighborhood is. I think that's really dope of him. You know? yeah. It's pretty innovative how he's... Um, I used to look at Nipsey's career as in really just in the, uh, him being independent and like some of the creative stuff he used to do. Like I, I used to look at also Karen Silver, give her a lot of credit for that too, I believe Absolutely. she worked with him. But I used to look at, I used to look at him and I, and I said, He's great for what he does, but for just that audience. I don't know if it could actually bubble. And, and what I meant by that is that I, I felt like it was just his independent grind was really just targeted like to his demographic. And I felt like he rode the wave. 
he capitalized off it, and when he did decide to sign a deal with Atlantic, you know, I think I looked at that, and I was like, mm, why do that? Because you're already succeeding within your lane, and you're dominating it. Why would you do that? And I think it's, it's just proof that everything he's done actually worked. The timing for everything worked, um, how he strategized, how he probably proved his worth to a label and to everybody else, and also built an audience and secured that audience. It all worked. So if I'm an artist, I would probably look at what he does as a blueprint if I'm starting out independent. So I, I can't even I can't even lie. Like he he did it the right way. He did it the right way. And I mean, look at how long it's taken. You know, so many kids like nowadays, all these kids they just bag chasing. Like, all right, I want a million dollar deal. I want this. I want that. They want everything instantly. Um, it's taken a long time, and I, I'm pretty sure he's made a lot of mistakes. You know, and those mistakes are a product of the success now. So, it, it, like, like you said, if you're looking at in terms of careers, like you, you definitely got to watch a lot of people. He's definitely one to watch. Where you could say, what if if I'm 21, what do I want to be at 31? You know, if if I'm 19, what do I want to be at 29? And just plan out a 10 year plan, looking at some of the things that he's done. You know? Yeah, a lot of things he does. He does, especially when at least I follow, um, just either articles or I see videos of him online. Like it's very transformative in this community. Mm -hmm. Like his, his music doesn't only just live on a record. Uh, his music transfers into him giving back to the community. I think that's dope. Yeah. Like, you can't even knock it. Like that's just, that's admirable. I think if more artists, admirable. I think <laughs> if more word. artists actually had that type of approach, mm -hmm. uh, wherever they're from would probably embrace him a little bit more, yeah. right? Okay. As, as they go throughout their careers. Cause you know, a lot of times, you know, people just want you to be back to the place where you're from like they just want you to be back in the hood just be there right? they don't really they don't really require you like upgrading and everything they don't really require you investing back into it mm -hmm. and i think people like him and rick ross they changing the mentality of course you have the jay-z's and the diddy's who on a larger level they have been doing a lot of great stuff but these guys they're changing how uh, artists who come from any neighborhood how they should be really held responsible to give back yeah and it's still to see people like jay notice it and also show love for it, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's cool also that he has his own indie label. So like you said, I'm sure he's been through a lot of his career, he's made mistakes, he's learned a lot. So can you imagine the knowledge he has to give those artists as they go out and build their own careers? Yeah. So he really is building just a huge, like flourishing community, like you guys say. Do you have expectations for this new album? Like you said, so it took him four years to like come up with Victory Lap, so he really took his time. Um, if this is the lead single, we gotta assume the other album might be coming sometime this year, hopefully. Well, it, it may be, but, um... I mean, this is a dope single, you know, of course, Roddy Rich is on it, which which is, is a dope connection because he's the next young guy coming out of Cali. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what to expect from it. Like with Nipsey, I never like put an expectation on what he's going to give. Like, um, I, and I'm going all the way back to like Bullets Ain't Got No Name mixtapes, like all of those things he did prior. Um, I, I'll just wait for it. Like, I, it's like one of those movies you don't want to see a trailer for. It's like, I'll just wait for it. That's a great way to describe it. I'll just wait for it. Mm. Yeah, again, um, normally I, w I would say we just we just had a good album by you. We're still actually celebrating that you got nominated for a Grammy for it. Let's not rush and put something out, but uh, in certain cases you have to just trust the artist, right? I'm hoping this is not Atlantic saying, all right, let's get, you know, we gave you that deal, nigga. Let's get this shit out. But Highly doubt it. <laughs> it but you, you got to trust the artist on this one. And, and if I'm thinking timeline-wise, maybe towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. again, I'm pretty sure They'll work a couple songs, and you never know, he might drop a few songs here and there, but I, I wouldn't expect the project before, like, later in the year, fourth quarter. Right. All right. Shout out to Nipsey. It's been pretty incredible watching your journey over the past decade. Uh, excited for the new project, if and whenever it comes. All right. Um, all right, let's get to a couple quick hits. We're going to be a little bit late today, so we're short on stories. Apologies. Um, Wait, let me make him apologize. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Consistently late over here. Um, so, according to TMZ, uh, the city of Houston, Texas, has declared February 24th as Meek Mill Day. Meek confirmed the news. He shared photos on IG saying, "Life is a roller coaster. Houston gave me a Meek Mill Day." I think this is really dope because we would expect this to happen in Philly first, but it's cool that he has a day in Houston. Yeah, I, I mean, when I first seen it, I was kind of like, I was thrown off because I didn't expect exactly. I didn't expect to see a Meek Mill Houston day, but he does have a lot of roots in Houston with him. Being around like Jay Prince and them, you know, what I mean, from very early on in his career up until now. But I just want to know, like, how do people get the days? Like that—that's my biggest question: is how do you get the day? Mm. Uh, because it, 
it, it still kind of throws me off that Meek has a date in Houston. I wouldn't expect him to. You think if you have a date, you could ask for like a statue, like a mini statue? I know. Or I think that's. I know a good they much. give the keys, but, <laughs> but you I can't actually do any. Much. Why not? A little the Meek statue. The crazy thing about a date is that nobody remembers the, the day other than when you got the day. Like you know mm. what I mean? Like we're not. We're not like somewhere celebrating Jaquan Day, you know what I mean? Like five years later, like nobody here. <laughs> Jaquan, you don't remember Jaquan? Did he get a day or is that just he a random example? Day five years ago. No, not five years ago, when he was popping, bro. Like, uh -huh. yo, mad artists get, like, are we celebrating the Mims Day in New York? Yo, but maybe it's on you to celebrate the day, like have a little Jaquan Day parade every week. Well, I mean, I think that's dependent, I think that's also dependent on the artist because uh, I don't trade the truth he doesn't I have was a just day, about, but Trey the Truth has a whole weekend. Like he has a <laughs> like Trey Trey it's called Trey Day. But then he, he has he like I get an official day? I, no, it's an official day, but I think and Trey does like the whole weekend. Right, so he but, celebrates I mean, like different Houston. events, right? Yeah, he has shit going on the whole weekend. So I'm pretty sure if Meek has a day and because he has so many different people that he's tied to or he messes with in Houston, he'll probably do stuff on his day in Houston. I'm surprised he didn't get that um in Pennsylvania first. Not necessarily well. I guess you know Philly, but, but even though Philly's trying sure to, he has a meek. I'm, I'm pretty sure Philly has some sort of meek thing. For, for him. Hell, they trying to send that nigga to jail. Like the, the judge over there trying to. But I see the I see the governor. I think Tom Wolf. I see him yesterday. He's tweeting about Meek Mill. I see Meek Mill re um, retweeting and stuff like that. Look like he's getting a lot of love, at least from some elected like, officials um, in Pennsylvania. I would think that they would show him a little bit more love. So it's, it's a little surprising when I'm seeing he's getting more love out of Houston, or at least they might again, after say, this listen, now. I wouldn't say he's getting more love out of Houston, though. Man, wait, 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 it's wait, wait. a Meek Mill day, wait, wait, bro. Wait, that means that means listen, free <laughs> rollies and wheelies for everybody. Free rollies, everybody so popping wheelies you can't on help Meek Mill day. Don't say Philly. It. Listen, Mike Rubin came and got him out of a, a Philly jail and flew him off from a helicopter to the game. He rang the fucking. That's a sixth right, and that's Philadelphia. So let's not say that Houston is showing. Uh, Meek more love than Philly went when when Meek uh, just gets love from the billionaires like the billionaires love him. <laughs> Give hey, that listen, nigga a day. Well, and, you know what they and, say and, about being a millionaire, right? You hang around five, you be the six or the ninth, and you be the tenth. So you hang around billionaires, that shit start rubbing off on you. Mm. I keep seeing them around nothing but billionaires this year. So you gotta stop hanging around Robert Kraft though. That nigga's wild. Well. <laughs> that nigga's wild. Well. That's a but, whole nother story. <laughs> but but um, if I'm reading like why he got a day correctly, uh, it said he was awarded a day because of a lot of stuff he's doing with prison reform. Mm -hmm. I would imagine if any place, again, if the governor and elected officials are pivoting off Meek Mill to rally for their next campaign about changing prison, um, um, just kind of like renovating, like, um, I'm, you just trying to say prison reform? All over okay. the place. <laughs> right, right. I was fucking up. Right. Right. <laughs> on, on some prison reform shit, again, again, I feel like uh, Philly specifically need to give him a day because this looked odd. I was like, you I don't know. All right. Uh, so congrats to Meek on your congrats day. But we hope that Philly also gives you a day. I think that was the point of this, right? Absolutely. Facts. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going right. to I'm gonna go to Philly and do a wheelie just for Meek on his, uh, on his day. Uh, hey. Is New Jersey going to give you an hour? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, man. Joe Bunny got data. He should. All right, uh, so before we go, some big money moves. So according to TMZ Sports, LL Cool J and Ice Cube have secured several billion dollars uh, in their push to buy a block of 22 uh, sports channel, which would include the ne Yes Network. That's pretty big. So the channels are currently owned by Disney, but the Justice Department is forcing them to sell off some of the channels to break up their monopoly. If this happens, that's a pretty huge move for them. Ownership. Yo, Amazing. I, I like this. I, li I like this because... Um, I mean, when I think of like just hip hop and I think of sports, I immediately think of Stuart Scott, right? Stuart Scott, who he had passed away from mm -hmm. his battle with cancer a couple of years ago and how he um, he brought like hip hop slang into corporate sports on, on ESPN. And when I look at certain brands like Slam Magazine or like um, Bleacher Report, and you see how like the the social media is ran, mm -hmm. and I've worked with Bleacher Report on a few different things. You could tell that they got people that's in hip hop culture working in there. So I think that um, you know, we got to change up the 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 way journalism is presented in sports. And I think that if if Ice Cube and LL pull this off, it's gonna open up a lot of opportunities for brothers and sisters to get into the game. You know? True. When you look at like even like a Taylor Rooks, like all the stuff that she does. Yeah. You know? I feel like there's a lot of like people in the entertainment. They talk that talk, and then there's the people who actually do the work to get it done. I hope you're not gonna say these are the ones who just talk, right? 
No. Okay. I'm good. saying that. No, well, I'm specifically. You know him. You I'm never just know never him. I know what's going to come, but I'm like, no, 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 no. No, I'm specifically saying Ice Cube is somebody who, mm -hmm. in terms of, like, creating a basketball league, mm -hmm. this. Um, also, like, like for example, when, when I mean talk that talk, like, all, all these motherfucking rappers say they about to buy an No, NFL I know you're team. right. right. Yeah. They ain't buying these... shit. You're going to get a box seat at, the, at your local, like, NFL mm -hmm. um, team's, like, uh, game, mm -hmm. season pass or whatever. And that's all you're gonna do. Like Ice Cube been doing a lot of stuff um, behind the scenes to really show real power. Mm -hmm. And I know we, we we salute Jay Z when he does his shit, but like he's been doing a lot of good stuff. So to see this and to see that he actually did the work of going around to get and secure billions billions of dollars in investors yeah. or investments. Um, I'm actually really proud of him. I don't know how LL Cool J fixed Well, LL has been out here. He has a lot yeah, of relationships. He's been doing movies, mm. TV, hosting award shows. Yeah. I'm sure he's been building behind the scenes as well. Hell yeah. To get to this Probably. point. Yo, I ain't gonna, but when you look at, when I look at LL and, um, when you look at LL and you look at Ice Cube, that's like two sides of the coin of having longevity from the East Coast and the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I mean, LL started as a like 15 year old rapper um, went on to be an uh, actor, done plenty of things, and still has a career to this day, and now is making moves like this, even with Ice Cube. You look at Ice Cube, he was in N.W.A. Before there was a death row, all of these different things, and he, he started being doing family movies and shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Now he's he did the Big Three. Is he still doing the Big Three? Yeah, yeah, the Big Three still exists, You know, which is really dope because a lot of people... Um, you wondering if your your favorite player still got it, and you yeah. see a lot of guys come out of retirement to play in the big three. So it, it's also providing a different side of basketball for ownership, like you saying about the the sports teams. It's not that the, a lot of rappers can't. I mean, it's not that they uh, can't do it. They just won't let people just jump into that. And it's a very very big investment. Yeah, something you definitely can't. And do also, long. it's a process. Like yeah. it's a big like process. if anybody ever tried to get like an like legit. Um, investors for something where you're gonna require millions of dollars, like you gotta go through the process of really getting these motherfuckers to have these little rounds. You gotta, you gotta have a plan. You gotta have you, a clean background because you know some bullshit <laughs> comes up every time somebody tries to make a big facts. Money. So, so I, I'm, I'm hoping when this happens, we start championing a lot of channels that they're gonna own, mm -hmm. and hopefully it'll be re representative of the culture with support of these two men. So as long as that happens, I'm straight with it. Yeah, that's dope. I mean, it's it's crazy. Like you, when if, if I'm a young rapper and I'm I'm not just thinking about rap. There's no way possible you could be a young rapper come into the game and you only just want to rap. I'm I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong if that's what you want to do, mm -hmm. but the opportunity and variety of things that you can do is so wide open and so vast. It's like this. this you would have never thought. I would have never thought of Ice Cube doing stuff like this when I was a kid watching him as an artist. You know. I think this is the billion dollar move as well because if you look historically at some of these contracts that um, these TV channels or whoever owns whatever blocks of TV channels, they secure the rights to like even NBA games or whatever, like that's where they make a shit ton of money because advertisers are gonna be lining up back to back to run ads on those particular um, um, broadcasting. So this could be the thing, yo, this could be the thing. Hopefully it really pans out and it's not one of those things where we look back and, and it didn't materialize but still, the mere fact that that's where he's thinking, yeah. it's already a win. Lit. Going to see some new names on the Forbes list soon. Hopefully, I'm trying right? to get there. Hello, real. Cool J going to be on the cover of that shit licking his lips. Right? <laughs> that's the first thing he thought of. For the people. Uh, uh, all right, I think we got to go. Do we have anything left? Uh, Lil Pump, he's good. I think uh, most people saw that viral video of him in that confrontation with the cops, but apparently they're dropping any charges that would have been an issue. Crazy <laughs> video. What's up? What? Why are you looking like that? Wait, what the hell is that me? Okay. You're looking at me like I'm like pump defense, like defense. You are. Stuff. It's just like you just no, pump attorney. my guy, man. Pump's my guy, but Sorry th again? this is very evident of what's going on. Um, pump sales looking weak, and we're seeing a bunch of shit happen. I seen him giving out food to the homeless. They intentionally leaked this, which was like eight months old. You know, to jump up uh, was some it excitement. That old? It was eight months old. Yeah, like he got arrested like months ago. Really? I it was yeah. like December. Okay. No, I don't think it was. Oh, so this was part of the rollout plan? Well, I think it's anything to jump attention. I see today, That's remember gosh. I told y'all the bundle with this album didn't, that didn't happen because the tour got canceled today or yesterday. Actually, I see him on, online saying, hey, if y'all want a chain, which is a bundle, 
Um, go get that. I think he's doing a lot of things. There was a beef with him in Smoke Press. I think this week is where you see artists who are kind of... Is he panicking? Um, yeah, I think all these motherfuckers... Nobody wants to flop. Hell yeah. So I think we're just seeing all of this. This is old as shit. I think his team just gave TMZ the shit, honestly. His lawyer probably got it through Discovery or whatever it is. Gave TMZ. TMZ put it out. And it's a headline. Mm. Headlines matter when your album's out. Wow, okay. Shit, we saw we saw a gunner just buy five hundred dollars worth of Girl Scout cookies. I mean, he. Would. I've never seen gunner on TMZ. Before. Which kind? Which flavor Girl Scout cookies? Samoas is my shit in Thin Mints. But um, I mean, he was walking. He was going to a meet and greet, and they were selling them outside. Man, come on. $500. No, no, I'm not saying that. that don't that, don't try to make Samoas it seem like. No, nah, I'm not saying that's some super test. contrived shit. But but what I'm what I'm saying is that, like, people know when it's album week, and like you're trying to get press, and hopefully press for the right thing. So you're saying like it spans from like. Arguments with police to buying Girl Scout cookies. I don't want to put that on Gunner. I don't want to. No, put no, no. That I'm gonna just gonna say he bought those Girl, he bought Scout, those cookies. Girl Scout cookies. No, he the no, no, I'm not saying you gotta go. The community. Pump gets when some I see, to the home. But did you I, get I was some in the, I, I'm really well. Pump, is, don't think Pump have a good heart. He gets some I'm not to the saying homeless. that Pump don't have a good heart because I don't know the young. He told to stay out the street. That's crazy, but but I'm just not a fan, a big fan of every kind gesture being recorded. And when, when Gunner was going to buy the cookies, he was on his way to do something. The cameras was already following him. There was okay. a thousand cameras around him. The whole pump thing, he walks up to a homeless man and gives him money. And I, I'm just not a big, I'm not a fan of that. I feel like if you're going to do a kind gesture, it doesn't have to be on camera. But I also understand people trying to bring awareness to doing kind things. To me, that seemed not genuine. Best case all. scenario is an act of kindness that you hear from the person who received said act of kindness. I'm, right? I'm person, them both. I only believe two people would. Well, I ain't gonna say two people, but the two people I like to see give back all the time is Ha Ha Davis and um, Fat Boy SSE. Why? I don't. It, 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 to, to me, like I just always see Fat Boy SSE. Like he'll be doing something, and I, of course he knows his cameras on him all the time. But like he'll always like. He'll, he'll he'll give up some bread like to it looks like a person that that's really I wouldn't gonna say a person that's really in need. It just seems more genuine when he does it. And when Haha Davis he uh, gave the money to this this um this older lady, she was trying to pay for her gas with change, and he gave her like a thousand dollars, and then she sent him a video back saying that that money had kind of saved her because her, her her husband had just passed away. Mm -hmm. She didn't have anything. That seemed more genuine. When I seen the pump shit, I just was like. You ain't been doing that, dog. Like, like you ain't been doing that. I mean, whether he was doing it or not, like I always said, I don't look a gift horse in the mouth. So whether it's Drake having a video where he says, "Yo, I'm this is a God plans video. I'm giving away." A I fuck, no, I fuck mm. with that video. I, I felt like that video was very genuine. Like I, I felt like that was very genuine. I'm just saying that it's very convenient. It's, but it was it's a very, promo. It was still like it was a marketing scheme. I mean, it was the budget. He just took the budget and gave it away to people. Now I'm just saying, great you, marketing scheme. You're bringing up, you're bringing up that Pump's album is out. His numbers is not looking how they should. You said he's panicking, and now he's giving money to the homeless. I've never seen him do that before. That's I've all never I'm seen saying. Gonna buy Girl Scout. All I'm saying is that when it comes to album week, you start seeing again. Most of these stuff, maybe we're just only seeing the visibility. Everybody's more visible during the album week. Absolutely. So who knows Absolutely. if Gunna does these things all the time, or who knows if Pump does these things all the time? It's just not recorded. You get me? But it's album week. You gotta be out there, and who knows? All I'm gonna say is, as we connected to like this video, which is months old, and the timing of everything, it's clear because it's album week. That's why we're seeing all that shit. But I'm not gonna knock it for giving the homeless. Uh, money. He told nah, me I'm still gonna believe that Gunna always <laughs> that was buys gross <laughs> cookies. Wild. Always. He told the homeless dude stay out the streets. That's crazy. That's crazy, my nigga. Like, all right, we you know. Should we make a rappers giving back segment? That'd that would be nice. Be, that'd be nice. We should do it at the end of the year. Rappers doing small acts of kindness. Absolutely. Now it has to be like a weekly segment. Weekly segment. All right, guys, that's our show for today. We'll see you here tomorrow in Everyday Struggle if Academics makes it on time. Maybe you can hit him on Twitter and his Instagram on his yes. DMs. Uh, oh, if you have his number, call him. However you can find him, tell Only him to come Barbs to work. Only the Barbs. Barbs, please Barbs. get him here on time tomorrow. Oh, yes. <laughs> have a nice day.